Evening. Hi, Madison Evans. How are you? You're early? Yeah, I've just switched on about a second ago. How was my day? I just got in from a driving lesson, so I'm feeling a bit frazzled right now, but give me a minute and I'll be well into doing this lesson for you. Well, it's not a lesson, it's a revision session. So we're going to go over some questions, some theory questions. Hi, Spur Plus, how are you? Let me know, guys, are you studying for a theory test? Let me know who you are, what you're doing here. Um, let me know you can hear me okay. Did anybody see Diane's live at two o'clock on here? How did that go? Good evening, Summer Begum. How are you, Belinda? Hi, how are you? Hi, Thomas, how are you? Keep putting your hellos in. Keep double tapping the screen because that will make sure that loads of people get to see these this live. Um, if you've got a problem logging into your account, then please go to testbuddies.app forward slash contact. Um, so screenshot that right now. Um, I can't help you on here, I'm afraid. There's nothing I can do, but my tech team will be really happy to help you if you go to there. Is that okay? Hello again, Trucker Nate. How are you? I buy your course. You bought my course. That's awesome. Um, Suki Brench. When did you get that then? How are you getting on with it? Let me know. I know that loads of people are... So, oh, oh signs I don't know why energy. that is there. Let me just get rid of that. I don't know what's happening there. Just wondering, am I better at doing a crash course or normal driving lessons? It's, um, well, it's entirely up to you. I don't, I don't, I don't know you. Um, are you quite confident? Do you know how to drive and to move a car already? Um, are there any crash courses available with, with a driving test at the end of it? Um, if you're a bit of a, um, a worrier, a panicky person, then it, uh, it's not the best decision. If you can already drive and you want to do a semi-intensive, it's a really good decision. Like I say, if you can't log in, please go to this people here. I can't help you. Um, there's nothing I can say to help. I'm Sui. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much. I passed my theory test today. Laurie and Laura Wright. That's awesome. Congratulations. You must feel great. Completed it, mate. What does that mean? Complete, you're talking to me? Completed, completed what? Theory revision? Okay, my name is Annie. Um, got mine on Thursday. Awesome. Your test on Thursday. Oh, good luck for that. Just passed my theory after four attempts. You've got it. You've done it now. That's brilliant. Hello, K-Fit. How are you? Keep sharing, guys. I've got one, 1 1.2 thousand likes already. If you keep double tapping, sending more likes, we can get lots and lots of people onto this live because I'm going to go over some theory questions with you this evening. Keely, you might want to go on to my... If you click on this link, it'll take you <coughs> to sign up for my course, but also it'll take you to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got some videos in there about hazard perception to help you. Cursed 426, awesome. Can anyone tell me how far, hard the theory is? Nobody can tell you it's me because it's how hard is it for you, okay? Everyone, some people will say it's dead easy. Some people say the questions are easy but the hazard perception's hard. Other people say the hazard perception's really hard but the questions are easy. Everyone's different, aren't they? And my name is Annie, I'm a driving instructor, I'm an audit trainer and I'm a theory test expert. Um, I'm here to make theory easy for you. I do lessons in the mornings at nine o'clock uh, for three hours, another lesson uh, in the afternoons at two o'clock for about three hours. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evening, I'll come on, I'll go through some questions with you. That's what I'm doing right now, going over questions. Are you gonna join in? Do I do driving lessons? Yeah, I do. I've just got back from a driving lesson. You helped me pass mine. That's amazing to hear. Um, so I do have a course. If you need more help than I can give in my lives, my course has got worksheets, video tutorials, facts lists. It's got topic mock tests, full mock tests. It's got case studies and more. More like games, hazard perception techniques, question techniques, all kinds of other stuff. And you're guaranteed the most updated questions as well. And it's only $34.99 if you sign up while I'm live. So click on this link. Have a look at it. I'll be live until about eight o'clock. If you're struggling, then 
It's only $34.99. It's only the price of one single one hour driving lesson. Um, I will start my live when, when my questions when I'm ready. Um, I've got so I'm waiting for more people to join, for more people to double tap the screen. If you get me up to seven and a half thousand likes, I'll get started with the first question. Hi again, Anika Khan. Hi again, how are you? Um, if you sign up for my, my course while I'm live, you get a free hazard perception course, a free hypnosis course, and two free ebooks as well. So get me up to seven and a half thousand likes, and, and I'll get started with the first question. When I do get started, make sure that you make a note of any questions you don't answer correctly. Who is that? You you better be something you better be congratulations hi hi marie how are you oh god oh, that went up so quickly uh, right that went up so so quickly didn't it so okay what's 12.9 13 000 likes i said seven and a half should we get started then should we get started with the first question cool keep double tapping that'd be amazing okay so question number one we'll do 10 questions have a break Another 10, have a break, another 10, and we'll finish after 30 questions. I'll read the question, read the answer, leave you a few seconds to answer the question and then reveal the right answer. Does that sound good? Keep double tapping for me, it's awesome. Okay, so what should you do if a driver pulls out of a side road in front of you? Causing you to break hard. A, ignore the error and stay calm. B, Flash your light to show your annoyance. C, sound your horn to show your annoyance. Or D, overtake as soon as possible. You know this one, don't you? Pop the answer in the comments. Let me know what you think the right answer is. What's the safest and most sensible option here? Hi, Amzi, how are you? Yeah, the safest and most sensible option is A, ignore the error and stay calm. Did you get that one right? Did you get that one right? You know it, don't you? You know you're not going to flash your lights. You know you're not going to sound your horn. You know that everybody makes mistakes and pulls out when they shouldn't do occasionally for whatever reason. So we're not going to show our annoyance at them. We're just going to ignore it. Thanks for your course. I passed today. That's awesome. Screen looks different, Amzi. I know. I know. I've got to sort it out. Don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going wrong. Okay, so next question. Question two. You're approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the traffic lights have failed? Sudsy, awesome. Break and stop only for large vehicles. Break sharply to a stop before looking. Be prepared to break sharply to a stop. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. Burnt daffodils, I was live for three hours this morning and an hour and a half. I'm going to be live this evening. No, three and a half hours this morning, actually. Okay, so what's the right answer? Another couple of seconds for you to put your answers in. Keep double tapping the screen. Let me know that you're liking what I'm doing. That'd be amazing. Cool. Yeah, the right answer here is D, be prepared to stop for any traffic. Of course, if you're at a crossroads, the traffic lights aren't working. Anybody has priority. Nobody has priority. So you need to stop. Burn now, B. Awesome. Question three. Why are vehicle mirrors of, uh, often slightly curved, which is called convex? If you fail today, I'm sorry to hear it, but I am here every morning. Somebody will be on this account um, helping you to pass your theory test. That's every weekday morning, 9 till 12. And this course that I've just pinned below will definitely help you. So why are mirrors often slightly curved or convex? A, they give a wider field of vision. B, they totally cover blind spots. C, they make it easier to judge the speed of the traffic behind. Or D, they make traffic behind look bigger. It's my third question, Bushy. Hi, how are you? So we've got A's, 
lots of A's, some C's and some D's. Okay, so the correct answer is, keep them, keep them coming, keep them coming. The correct answer is A, they give a wider field of vision. Let me just um, explain that. So mirrors, the mirrors, the glass in your door mirrors is curved like that. It's not flat, it's curved. And because it's curved, it means instead of just seeing up and down the road, you can see out to the side as well. You can see more. They give a wider field of vision. But because the mirrors, the glass is curved, what you can see is distorted. It's not exactly as it should be. So what it does, it makes things look like they're further away. Put C for closer or F further away. What do you think? If things look smaller than they really are in your door mirrors, do they look? They look further away. Yeah, absolutely. An F for further away. They look like they're further away than they really are. Why is it dangerous if things look like they're further away than they really are? Why is that dangerous? Thank you, Mr. McFlurry Zero. Why is it dangerous if things look further away than they really are? They could be closer, absolutely. You could, you could misinterpret how farther away, you could judge it wrong. Alter perception, all of those things, misjudgment, absolutely. So you could think, look at your door mirror, oh, that car's miles away. I'll move out to the other lane and it could crash into you because it's closer than you think it really, really is. So you could misjudge it. Cool. So it's important to know, isn't it? Right, next question. What type of vehicle displays this yellow sign? Is it a broken down vehicle, a school bus, an ice cream van, or a private ambulance? Yeah, keep double tapping the screen. Show Annie some love, guys, says Bushy. That'd be awesome. Just double tap your screen and send lots and lots of hearts. If, you like what, if you're liking what I'm doing, then let me know. Which one of those is it? Is it A, B, C, or D? Another five seconds and I'll reveal the answer. Yeah, it is, it is, you know it, don't you? It's a school bus. A school bus will have this sign on it. How much is it to subscribe to your channel? I don't know what that means. Do you mean for my course? I don't, I don't pay to subscribe to a channel. I don't, I don't know what that means, sorry. Okay, a driver's behaviour has upset you. How can you get over this incident safely? What can you do? Stop and take a break. Shout abusive behavior, uh, language. Gesture to them with your hand. Follow them flashing your headlights. Nikisa, Nikisa, I really don't know what that means. Could also subscribe next to your name. At the top, it's got a star. Um, on, on TikTok, you mean? But you don't have to pay for that, do you? I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to look up, look, look, look and see what you mean. Don't forget, you can swipe your screen to the right if you want to get rid of that food fest thing that's a bit annoying there. You swipe to the right. Okay, so the right answer there is obviously stop and take a break. There's no point shouting abusive language. You're only going to get stressed as well. How would your driving be? Or how could your driving become if you shout or start gesturing to people or start following them, flashing your headlights? How could that affect your driving? 
Thank you, Ben Corsa, for the... Uh, it could disrupt your driving. I know you won't drive as well. You could make irrational decisions. I know there's no point. If someone's may, uh, upset you, there's no point um, in, in making it even worse. It, no point making it even worse. Distracting for you and others, absolutely. Don't let them affect you. Don't let them affect you. Be the bigger person. How should you drive in areas with traffic calming measures? I'm on till eight o'clock, so don't worry. I've, only, I've not been on for long. I've only been on 15 minutes. How should you drive in areas with traffic calming measures? A, at a reduced speed. B, at the speed limit. C, in the centre of the road. Or D, with headlights on dipped beam. So I've got A's and B's and D's. Keep putting your answers in so I know what you're thinking. So lots of A's and lots of B's and some C's as well. A, I'm not sure, says Macarim. Is that Macarim or Macarim? Well, you're right, it is. It is A, at a reduced speed. So what they mean by that is you've got the speed, um, the speed humps. You don't speed up, slow down to go over the hump. Speed up, slow down to go over the hump. That's not the way to do it. Just re um, keep on driving at a reduced speed throughout uh, along that road. Does that make sense? Put some, put some yeses in if that makes sense. Fairly common sense question, Dan the Bin Man, it is to you. And that's great that it is to you. Um, but it's not, not to everybody, I'm afraid. Okay, so at a reduced speed. And you know what? If it's a common sense question, that's because the thing, well, you should know this. Make sure you're doing it when you're driving. This is all in your course. Of course, this is all in my course, yes. Cool. Does that make sense to you guys? Let me just, yes is in, if that makes sense. Thank you. I'm guessing the hang of my theory now because of your course. Yay, that's, that's brilliant. Am I on every day, every weekday? Yes. Next question. Why are place names painted on the road surface? A, to restrict the flow of traffic. B, to warn of oncoming traffic. C, to help you select the correct lane in good time. D, to prevent you from changing lanes. What's the correct answer here? Oh, little gem, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you, are you lifetime going to be the same for the whole of this week, Annie? Uh, there's, there's, I have to put a, vi a video up. It's been very, very complicated because of a house move and builds and things like that. So I will put a, I will put a, a post on at some point. But there will be somebody here live every morning um, at 9 till 12 and somebody here every afternoon at 2 o'clock. Guys, bye. Her course, absolutely amazing and so helpful. Trust me, thank you. Okay, so, so, so yeah, you have place names painted on the road surface as well as on signs so that you can get into the correct lane in good time. So you need to look. Don't drive too close to the vehicle in front of you because you could miss those signs um, that are painted on the road surface. Does that make sense? Would you say three months of studying is enough? I say it's more than enough, Toast Malone. Yeah, absolutely more than enough. Don't drive too close to people. If you've failed eight times, then pass next time by using this course. What type of vehicle uses an amber flashing beacon on a dual carriageway? Is it an ambulance, a fire engine, a doctor on call, a tractor? Is it a B, C, or D. Is one month enough? Yeah, for most people. I don't know you. I don't know whether you have dyslexia, whether you can't read very well, whether you don't speak English very well. Um, but uh, for most people, a month is, is, is long enough. Yeah, yeah. Between two and six weeks, most people will take. 
you failed six times, so it's hard. That's why I'm here. Cool. So what vehicle uses a flashing amber beacon? And it's going to be a tractor. So um, slow moving vehicles will use amber beacons, okay? Slow moving vehicles. Um, what, let's do another one. What color beacons do emergency vehicles use? Tractors can go on dual carriageways. Yes, they can. Um, which is why that question is there. Um, it's an official DVSA practice theory test question and tractors can go on dual carriageways. Okay, so what colour do emergency vehicles use? They use blue. Doesn't matter, it's all right, don't worry. Okay, it's blue. Okay, so what, what are emergency vehicles? Give me an emergency vehicle that will use blue flashing beacons. Katie Marie, you've got it. I was going to ask that in a minute. The police, Andrew, yeah. Yeah, the police. Ambulance, yeah, Zach. Bomb disposal, awesome. So police, ambulance, bomb disposal, any more? Any more? Fire engines, firefighters, absolutely, yeah, brilliant. And the other colour is green. So yeah, lady, bomb disposal. The other colour is green. And a few people have already answered, but for those of you who haven't seen it, who uses a green flashing beacon? Doctors, yeah, yeah, doctors on call. Fantastic, fantastic. So slow moving vehicles um, are amber, doctors on call are, um, are green, and emergency vehicles are blue. Think blues and twos. Awesome. Uh, so what does this signal from a tr police officer mean to oncoming vehicles? What does that mean? Does it mean go ahead, stop, turn left or turn right? Which one of those four does it mean? What do you think it means? A, B, C, or oh, you keep putting your answers in. Lots of people putting B, stop. Let's see, see if you're correct. Shall I reveal the answer? And the answer there is, yeah, it's stop. That means stop to people coming in front of you. Does that make sense? Did you get that right? Did you get it right? I mean, you would, wouldn't you? If a police officer said that, you would know it meant stop, wouldn't you? Yeah, brilliant. Okay, think about the wording for this. Think about the words that are used. How can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive? A, your ability to judge speed will be reduced. Your confidence will be reduced. Your reactions will be faster. Your awareness of danger will be improved. Is it A, B, C or D? Really, thank you, the giggling something. Really think about the words that they've used here. Because I know you know the answer, but it's the wording that makes it a little bit um, funny for some, for some people. Let's go through them. Your ability to judge, so how you judge things is reduced. Does that mean it's better or worse? If it's reduced, is your ability to judge made better or your ability to judge made worse if it's reduced? Just put better or worse for me. It's worse, okay? So your ability to judge is worse. That's what that one means. This one, your confidence will be reduced. That means your confidence is worse. Do you have worse confidence when you're drinking alcohol? Do you have less confidence, worse confidence when you've had a drink, um, when, you've had a, when you've had a beer, when you've had a glass of wine? Yes or no? No, you have more confidence, don't you? Yeah, okay. So it's not that one, is it? Um, your reactions will be faster. Do you react faster when you've been drinking alcohol? 
or do you just think you're reacting faster? Yes or no? Do you react faster? No, you do, You think you're faster, but you're actually slower, aren't you? Okay, your awareness of danger will be improved. You'll have a better awareness of danger if you've been drinking alcohol. Could that be the right answer? Yes or no? Will your awareness of danger be improved, made better? No, it won't. So what is the right answer, guys? Put the answer in now for me. Now we've gone through what they're actually saying to you. What, what is the correct answer? You know it, don't you? I can see some lots more correct answers coming in now, which is amazing. Keep putting them in. Come on, guys. That's 570 people on here. Let's have 500 and odd answers coming in. What is the right answer now? It is. It is. Yeah, keep, keep them coming. Layla, you know it. Precious, you know it. The cosy canopy and lots more people know it. Brilliant. Yeah, the answer is A, your ability to judge will be reduced. You won't have as good an ability to, re to, to judge. It will be worse, okay? So that's why you don't drink alcohol. That's 10 questions done already, believe it or not. We've been on for half an hour. Um, how have you got on? So what I really want to know is how, what have you learned? Or have you learned anything? Just put a yes or a no. Have you learned anything at all? A lot I can manage. That's awesome. Can you recommend any good any good YouTube theory revision videos? Beth makes um go onto my account. There you go. That you can you can subscribe to my YouTube by clicking on that link below. You explain the questions good. That's awesome. You just joined. Can I ask you one question? You're better just asking it to me because I may well just miss it. Um, not learned anything as yet, but breaking down the questions and answers is really helpful. That is really good, Sophie. So what you've learned, Sophie, is that you're actually pretty good at the, the questions that we've done already, okay? That's what you've learned, that's brilliant. Yes, green for doctor on call, but awesome. Are, they, are any of these questions going to be on the theory test? I don't know, Jordan. This is stuff that you need to know. I'm Annie, I'm a theory test expert. These, what I'm covering with you, are official DVSA practice questions. Whether they come up on your test or not, or whether the questions will be similar on your test, I don't know. But what you need to know is the information that I'm covering. My name is Annie. If you just joined me, um, I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I'm an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. Have, is this your first time watching me? Or have you seen me before? Let me know. Is it your first time? Yes. Hi Siobhan, how are you again? Keep sending me love guys, keep double tapping the screen. So is it your first time, hanging with my dreams, your first time, first time, first time. Hi Jen, Jen 84. So lots of people are watching me for the first time. You've been watching since yesterday, that's awesome. You're always here for 20 Barbie, that's brilliant. Okay, so a lot of people are watching me for the first time. Let me just tell you who I am and what I do. Like I say, my name is Annie Winterburn from Theory Test Practice. I'm a driving instructor. I train people to become driving instructors. I'm a theory test expert. I am here making theory easy for you. That's what I want to do because the pass rate is really, really low. The pass rate is only 47%. And I know I can make it easy. So I've, I've come on here. Um, there's be somebody on this account every single morning, weekday morning at nine o'clock and in the afternoons at two o'clock and some evenings at half past six as well. So keep following me on TikTok and find out exactly when I'm live next. I've got a course as well. So I, I created a course, I put together worksheets, video tutorials. I've got another 10 questions coming up, so stay with me. I put together video tutorials, fact lists, um, the audio as well, so you can listen to the facts. I've got topic mock tests, full mock tests. I've got case studies and more, like games and hazard perception techniques and more and more and more <laughs> um, to help you to be 100% 
ready to take your theory test. You are guaranteed the most updated questions because the DVSA have given me them. Uh, and the course is only $34.99 while I'm live. Let me show you a one minute video all about the course. Then we'll get back on with another 10 questions. So have a click, click on the link below. Your screen behind you, the hill is right steep up. On your screen behind you, with a hill is right, steep hill up, left steep hill down. I'm not sure. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> okay, let me show you. I'm not sure what that means. Sorry. You'll see how to go through the course for all 14 theory topics. There's a worksheet that you can fill in if you want to. Watch all video tutorials, then listen to the list of facts. Listening to the fact list while you're doing other stuff, like going to the gym or cooking, means that you can use different times to learn and that you can learn without even trying to learn. Just like when you listen to the words of a song and you learn the words without even trying. Then it goes through all the practice questions. When you get all the questions correct, have a go at the topic mock test. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the topic mock test, move on to the next topic. Going through all theory topics in the same way will make case studies questions simple to answer. The 16 mock tests in the course are designed to cover every single practice question. And the course has got techniques for answering questions, techniques for doing hazard perception, and techniques for getting rid of test anxiety. You failed two times by your course, so I am soon, Gabrielle Brown, awesome. Go through it step by step from the beginning and you will pass on your third attempt. Now, you, someone's asked me, will I go over has a perception? No, this is not a lesson. This is questions and answers. This is a revision session, okay? Who on here is already on my course or has used my course? Just put a comment in to help people to know how, what you think of it. So is anybody on here already on or already has used my course? Me says, it's Raheem. I bought it, I still need to do it. Hi again, me says Maya Karim. Me on it says Tamara Smith. Me says Tish Tishy. Sanam says using it. Alice is using it. Danielle's using it. Best course I've ever done, says Siobhan. So lots of people here um, use the course and join in with these lives as well. Great way of learning your theory. Good luck for tomorrow. Um, when's my hazard lesson? I did a hazard lesson today, so it's not, um, probably not this week now, but go onto my YouTube channel and you'll be able to see a recording of one of them. Or sign up for my course. Do I have one for dyslexic people? How helpful is my course for dyslexic people? Can anybody put a comment in? Um, do you think my course is suitable for dyslexic people? I'll let other people answer that question for you. I don't have a specific course for dyslexic people, but I think my course, oh, Siobhan says, I'm dyslexic and pass with it. Does that help you? Why don't you have a look at the pinned link and see um, and see how it will help. So I'll go through another 10 questions. Are you ready, guys? Let's get up to 70,000 likes and I'll get straight on with the next question. Don't forget to make a note of any questions you get wrong so you can learn from them. Don't kick yourself for getting a question wrong. Congratulate yourself for learning something tonight. So go on to TikTok and learning something. So double tap the screen, get me up to 70,000 likes and I get straight on with the next question. The videos are good, but it's too much reading, it gets hard. Um, there isn't um, a lot of just reading in my course. A lot of my course has audio with it. So you can click to listen to what's in the course. All the questions, all the answers, all the fact lists, all the videos are all for listening. It's just the worksheets that aren't, not a lot of reading. Are we, we've gone past 70,000. Cool. Yeah, 100. Uh, through so much and does it stick in my head but I can take talk it take it easily cool 
Let's go to the question, shall we? I love your course, says Craig John Clark. That's awesome. That's awesome. If you go all the way through it, I know you'll pass. It's taken me years to put together. What's the maximum fine for driving or riding without insurance? Is it A, unlimited, B, £500, C, £1,000, or D, £5,000? What's the maximum fine for driving without insurance? Which one of those is it? I've got A's and C's. Lots of A's, lots of C's. Thank you for the, I can't read that name. Thank you for the gift, um, the rose you just sent me though. The lot this looks like lots of O's. The maximum fine for driving or riding without insurance actually is unlimited. Okay, so remember that one for next time, guys. Is it now that you know, thank you, May, Mom, Mia, now that you know is an <laughs> now that you know is an easy one to learn. Yeah, oh Anna. Oh Anna. <laughs> Just like lots of O's to me. Um yeah, Anna, sorry. Okay, so unlimited. Okay, does that make does that make sense? The maximum fine is unlimited. Give me a thumbs up or give me a yes in the comments if you now know that. You didn't know it, but now you do. You think you're ready for the exam? That's awesome. So you didn't know it, but now you do. Thank you again, Anna. Let me know. Yeah, you do. Brilliant. That's what you're here for, to learn something. The maximum fine for driving or riding without insurance is unlimited. You're more than welcome to screenshot this so you can look at it later and tell somebody else if you think you'll struggle to remember. Okay, next question. In order to supervise a learner driver, you need to have held a full driving license for the same category of vehicle for at least three years. So what other requirements must be met? So if you want to sit with somebody to teach them to drive, to help them with driving, you have to have a full driving license for three years. What else do you have to be? So you need to have a car with dual controls. You need to be at least 21 years old. You need to be an approved driving instructor or you need to hold an advanced driving certificate. What do you think the right answer is? Follow me on TikTok, you'll find exactly when I'm live. It's not every night. I can't do every night, can I? So some people think it's A, some people think it's B. Come on guys, keep putting your answers in, keep putting them in. A lot of people are saying it's B now. Yeah, and you're right. The answer is B. You need to be at least 21 years old. You need to have held a license for three years. When you're supervising a learner driver, when you're sat with somebody, are you allowed, you in the passenger seat, are you allowed to use your phone? Let me know. What do you think the answer is here? When you're supervising somebody, are you allowed to use your phone? Toby Porcelain, absolutely not. Clearview driving, absolutely not. Okay, so if somebody's supervising you and they're using their phone, don't allow that, guys. Please don't allow it, okay? I've had a few learners who said to me, oh, my dad took me here and he was doing his work on his laptop at the same time. Please don't allow that, it's against the law. Uh, hi, Clearview driving, how are you? Okay, next question. What does it mean if your insurance policy has an excess of £500? Do you know it? A, your insurance, the insurance company will pay the first £500 of any claim. You will be paid £500 if you don't claim within one year. Your insurance, your vehicle 
is insured, thanks clearly you're driving, your vehicle is insured for a value of £500 if it's stolen, you'll have to pay the first £500 of the cost of any claim. Why are you putting your answers in? I want to recommend that you go and you follow Clearview Driving. Clearview Driving. Clearview Driving is on here right now and does some absolutely amazing live lessons recorded uh, with some great teaching, some great tips in there. So go and follow Clearview Driving on TikTok. Okay, so what does it mean, guys? We've got some, <laughs> I love watching them during the day. So um, does it mean A, B, C or D? So what it means is you'll have to pay the first £500 of the cost of any claim. A quick explanation if I can get my mind around it. Okay, you will pay less for your insurance. You won't pay as much for your insurance if you agree to have an excess. And the excess means that if you have to make a claim you don't get all of the money. So you pay less insurance, but when you make a claim, you won't get all the money. Does that make sense? Put some yeses in if that actually makes sense. And I'll explain a little bit further. Put some yeses in if that makes sense. And I'll explain a bit further. Sophie, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 awesome, awesome. So if you have a crash and you have to claim 1,000 pound, and your excess is £500, you'll pay the first £500 and the insurance company would give you £500. Now, if you're lost to sell, you just need to go and talk to somebody about it. Somebody who's got a car, who's, in, who's arranged insurance. But basically, like I say, you'll pay less for your insurance if you agree to have an excess which is the bit that you pay if you make a claim. Say it out loud, it'll make more sense to you. Next question. You're going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? What's congestion? Can anybody put the answer in? For somebody who might not speak English even very well, what do they mean by congestion? Can anybody put traffic, Toby Porterfield? Yeah, lots of traffic, okay? Yeah, these sweets, lots of, a build-up of traffic, Xanthi. Yeah, fantastic. So what will warn you? There's a build-up of traffic. There are traffic queues. There's busy traffic, Siobhan, yeah. What's going to warn you of that? Or an incident, like a crash. Okay, what will warn you about that? So I've got some, a, um, I've got some C's and some A's I've noticed as well. So, answer this question. If there was congestion, would that be there all the time or just sometimes? Just put all or some. If there was congestion or a crash, would that be all the time? Or it'd just be sometimes, Catherine. Sometimes Alexandra Free says, yeah, just sometimes, yeah. So, hazard warning lines, are there all the time. So is it going to be hazard warning lines that warn you there's a crash or a traffic queue ahead of you? You know the answer now, don't you? You know the answer. The answer is variable message signs. What does variable mean? A lot of you know this, but some of you don't know it. What does variable mean? Can you give me a word, a different word for variable? Changing, yeah, it changes different, various changes. So it'll be light lit up, okay, and it will change, okay? So variable changing message signs will tell you there's um, a, an accident or congestion ahead. Huh, does that make sense? Just put a yes if that makes a bit more sense to you. It varies, Meg. Yeah, that's, that's a great way of putting it. It varies, it changes, it's different. Yeah, that make a bit more sense to you. Cool. Breaking questions down, breaking answers down. Don't just memorise the answer and not even know what variable message signs means. Break it down so you always know what it means. Next question. At an incident... A casualty 
it um is <laughs> oh gosh will this be uploaded to youtube no i don't think it most of mine will but maybe i'll do this one tiktok one maybe i'll do this one okay um at an incident a casualty is unconscious but breathing when should you move them a when an ambulance is on its way b when bystanders tell you to move them c when there's a risk of further danger d when bystanders offer to help you bystanders people that are bystanders people that are standing by people that are nearby that's all that means so at an incident a casualty is unconscious but the breathing when should you move them most people are put c you're absolutely correct when there's further danger ahead don't move people who are injured don't move people who are um, unconscious unless absolutely necessary because who can finish that sentence off for me why shouldn't you move people unless absolutely necessary why shouldn't you move people unless absolutely you could cause them more harm you could injure them further you could cause further injury yeah you could hurt them okay you can paralyze them okay don't move them unless you absolutely need to and they're going to get their head run over if you don't run over, you don't move them okay does that make sense guys you could hurt them you could cause paralysis even which would be awful okay does that make sense to people to some people yeah brilliant answers coming in well done amazing adam hi how are you you didn't get it right don't worry now you know you've broken down how long should you revise for your theory test as long as it takes you to go through all of the revision how long is that going to take you two weeks four weeks six weeks i don't know how much time have you got during the day um, so you're you've broken down on a two-way road you have a warning triangle at least how far from your vehicle should you place the triangle so you've got a triangle in your boot and you can put it up on the road behind your car just to tell people to warn people that your car's broken down should it be five meters behind your car 25 meters behind your car 45 meters behind your car or 100 meters behind your car a red triangle a warning triangle i don't know this fashion life well you will know now why don't you have a guess while this is while this is a question session why not have a guess so we've got a's c's and d's five meters wouldn't be very far would it only five meters away um put in a warning triangle it's not really giving people very much warning so the right answer here is 45 meters do this with me 45 meters away you put a put a warning triangle 45 meters away just do that help yourself to remember forever okay yeah you got it correct amazing adam that's awesome so just do that 45 meters 45 meters away um a warning triangle 45 meters away and um then put d in the comments for done when you've done that so i know you've done it and you're joining in just giving yourself a little bit of a way to remember or find your way of remembering brilliant and that's quite important you know if you do break down at some point and you do need to place a warning triangle out or you need to help somebody else place a warning triangle behind their car you want to know it's about 45 meters away don't you you've done it brilliant your car breaks down on a level crossing what's a level crossing what's a level crossing guys yeah well done guys what is a level crossing no i haven't done flow and contra flow uh today it's a train track crossing it's where the car brilliant yeah it's where your car drives over a train track okay um good what's the first thing you should do if your car breaks down on the crossing how awful would that be a 
tell drivers behind what's happened. B, leave your vehicle and get everyone clear. C, walk down the track and signal to the next train. D, stay in your car until you're told to move. Guys, which one of those would you definitely not do? <laughs> you wouldn't do D, would you? You wouldn't stay in your car. Cool, so what do you think the most right answer here is? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't do C either. I wouldn't walk down a railway track, would you? Okay, so the right answer is B, leave your vehicle and get everyone clear. That is the safest and most sensible thing to do, first of all. Answer me another question. If possible, if you've got time, should you and your passengers push your vehicle off the track? Yes or no? What about the car though? Bailey, I'm covering that now. If you've got time, should you push your car off the railway track? Or should you just leave it for the train to smash into, causing the train loads of problems unnecessarily? So if there's time, should you move your car off the track? Or should you just leave it on the track for the train to smash into? Yeah, yeah. If there's time and it's safe, Anika, Anika Khan, get your train off the track. Don't just leave it there. If there's no time, you're going to have to leave it there. But you know, honesty boy, yeah, it's not great for a train to have a car in the track. The priority is being safe, but get it off the track if there's time, okay? Does that help? Does that make sense? Get out of the car. First of all, get everyone else out of the car. Then if there's time, push it off the track. Don't just leave it there if you, if you, if you, um, if you can help it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Awesome. I know pushing a train off a railway track might seem a bit crazy, but as I say, it's if there's time. Cool. Next question. What's the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? Is it 30, 50, 60 or 70 miles per hour? The national speed limit means the fastest you're allowed to go for cars and motorcycles. What's the speed? You need to know this. You're going to be driving on a motorway. You need to know how fast you're allowed to go. I'm sorry to hear you failed. Please have a look at this course. It will definitely help you. It helped thousands of people to pass so far. Yeah, the fastest you're allowed to go on a motorway is 70 miles per hour. You need to know that the answer to that question. You don't want to be driving 60 when you're allowed to drive at 70. Is it 60 miles per hour in 70 miles per hour in lane one, two, and three, or just in lane three? Is it national speed limit? Is it 70 miles per hour in all the lanes or in just one lane? Dual carriageway is, seven, is, uh, is, is, is 70. Yeah, 70 miles per hour in all the lanes. So there is, there is not a slow and a fast lane on a motorway. All the lanes are 70 miles per hour. Does that make sense? Yeah, brilliant. What should you do immediately after rejoining, after joining a motorway? So you're coming onto a motorway, you get onto the motorway, what should you do? Should you try to overtake? Should you readjust your mirrors? Should you position your vehicle in the centre lane? Should you stay in the left hand lane? What should you do? So immediately after joining the motorway, the answer is D, you should stay in the left-hand lane. Why is that? Why are they advising you to stay in the left-hand lane for a short period of time? 
Why is that, guys? Put your answer in the comments. Who knows? Caitlin, good luck for next week. Stay with us. We'll help you. It's safest to pick up speed, to adapt, to build up your speed. Uh, there you go, Catherine. So you can get used to traveling at high speed. It does take a minute or so to get used to controlling the car at that higher speed. So the safest thing you can do is stay in the left-hand lane for a short period of time, get used to it, and then move out to the other lane if you're overtaking. You should drive in the left-hand lane unless you're overtaking. Does that make sense? Cool, next question. How should you rejoin a motorway after a breakdown on the hard shoulder? So you've broken down, your car's now fixed, you're going to get back onto the motorway. Should you build up speed on the hard shoulder before looking for a safe gap in the traffic? Or should you move straight into the left-hand lane as you're not allowed to drive on the hard shoulder? Or C, should you wait until a vehicle in the left-hand lane signals to you that it's safe to rejoin? Or D, should you keep your hazard lights flashing until you've safely rejoined the motorway? Mimi, awesome. Is the answer A, B, C or D? And I've got some I don't knows, I've got some A's and I've got some D's. What do you think is the safest option to drive on the hard shoulder until you've built up some speed and then look for a safe gap to get into lane one or keep your hazard lights flashing? Which of those is the safest option? A, 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 D, D, A, 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 A. So the correct answer here is to build up speed on the hard shoulder before looking for a safe gap in the traffic. Before you move, before you start driving again, what should you do with your hazard warning lights? When you've broken down on the hard shoulder, you put your hazard warning lights on. But before you move off again, what should you do with those hazard warning lights? Turn them off, yeah, turn them off. Don't keep them on. They're going to be very distracting for people driving down the motorway, okay? You don't have them on, you just build up speed and then how are you going to signal to come onto the motorway if you've got your hazard warning lights on? So you should switch them off, you should turn them off. Does that make sense? So how have you got on? That's another 10 questions done. How have you got on? Let me know. Have you learned anything? Just put me if you've learned anything um, or tell me what you've learned in this session. Very good, very good. Thank you, Alexandra Fritz. Just turn them off. You've learned something cool. You got them all right, so you've learned something, you've learned that you need to know them, that you're doing them quite well, actually, sorry. Cool. Tecla Bora, thank you. You got them all correct, and you got your test tomorrow. Yay. That's awesome. And you know what? I'm going through another 10 now, in a couple of minutes. If you get any wrong, that doesn't matter, you can learn from it, okay? It'd be great if you can learn something you didn't know. Cool. My name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. Do you know me? Have you just popped on now and it's your first time you see me? Let me know who is here for the very first time. I learned nothing. Awesome. Okay. I'm an ADR driver. I was an ADR driver. Who know who's here for the very first time? A few people. Okay, I'll tell you who I am. 
second time, okay? I'm Annie, Annie Winterburn, and I'm a driving instructor. I'm a driving instructor trainer. I'm a theory test expert, and I'm here making theory easy for you. Uh, hi, Neil Lab, and, and another ADI. Hi, how are you? Um, oh, a chemical driver. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm a theory test expert, here to make theory easy for you. So in the mornings and the afternoons, I will go through lessons to teach you. And in the evenings, some of the evenings, I'll go through a load of questions um, so we can have some practice together. I've got a course as well. I've spent a few years now creating this course and putting everything in it that you need to pass your theory test. So I've put together worksheets um, that you can fill in if you want to. There are video tutorials for you to watch. Uh, thank you, amazing Adam. Uh, there are uh, fact lists that you can read or listen to. There are topic mock tests. There are full mock tests. There are case studies and so much more. You're guaranteed to have the most updated questions because the DVSA who have looked at my courses have given me all the questions. And if you sign up while I'm live for the next 30 minutes, I'm finished at eight o'clock. If you sign up while I'm live, it's only 34 99 um, This is UK. This is the... Um, the link to the course below. Have a look at this video, this one minute video, and then I'd say, get me up to a few more likes, I'm gonna get started with the next 10 questions. So here is exactly what's in the course and how you can learn without even trying to learn because there's audio fact lists and if you listen to the fact list while you're washing your car or walking the dog or um, having tea or brushing your teeth, you're learning without even trying to learn because that's how you learn songs. You learn the word you because uh, you just heard them. So I might, I need to just plug my phone in. Excuse me, it drains the battery doing these. Plug it in there, there you go. In the introduction, you'll see how to go through the course. For all 14 theory topics, there's a worksheet that you can fill in if you want to. Watch all video tutorials, then listen to the list of facts. Listening to the fact list while you're doing other stuff, like going to the gym or cooking, means that you can use different times to learn and that you can learn without even trying to learn. Just like when you listen to the words of a song and you learned the words without even trying. Then it goes through all the practice questions. When you get all the questions correct, have a go at the topic mock test. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the topic mock test, move on to the next topic going through all theory topics in the same way will make case studies questions simple to answer. The 16 mock tests in the course are designed to cover every single practice question. And the course has got techniques for answering questions, techniques for doing hazard perception, and techniques for getting rid of test anxiety. Who created the video? A, a, a lady, an um, awesome lady called Dana. Um, uh, yeah, so she created the video for me. It's quite cool. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I liked it. Um, I passed on Friday. Your course had helped me so much. Thank you, Annie. Thank you, Tammy, for popping on, letting me know, and congratulations. Well done. You must feel awesome. You don't need me here, but thank you for popping on. And make sure you share this live so I can help so many more people. If you sign up while I'm live, you uh, if you sign up while I'm live, you get a free hazard perception course, a free hypnosis course. Both of those are worth um, twenty five pounds. You get a top ten reasons for failure ebook, top twenty hardest theory test questions ebook. Um, so let me get up to who wants to do another ten questions. Just put me if you want to do another ten questions. Annie, previously you recommend another TikTok. Can you repeat? While I've been live tonight, I've recommended somebody called Clearview Driving. 
um, C L E A R View Driving, who um, she's awesome. Uh, I don't know her, but she's really, really great. I've watched her lives where she's recording. Um, uh, lessons driving lessons and she puts really great posts in there and they're all really really accurate I, I love the account so Clearview driving yes yeah, she's really good isn't she if, I, if, if my daughter was learning and didn't learn with me I'd definitely send her to her, that, that, that lady she's brilliant Cool. So who wants to do another 10 questions? Put some yeses in the comments if you want to do another 10 questions with me now. And if you do, can we get to 110,000 likes? Can we go to 110? Was that too much to ask of you? Can you get double tapping and we get to 110,000 likes? Come on, guys, let's get ready. Let's try do this together. It is what? What time is it? Um, it's half past seven, 25 to eight at night, and we're learning together. Um, so let's get double tapping, and maybe 110 is a bit of a tall order, but keep on going, keep on going, guys, and we'll do another 10 questions. Like I say, join, go on to um, Clearview Driving and watch her all about driving, and also um, New Driver Programme. Go on there because uh, Diane is often on there doing lives and she is amazing. Okay, so, whoa, you are doing brilliantly. 109,000. That is awesome. Come on, that's yes, yes, yes. Go on, bit more, bit more, bit more. Keep going and we've done it. We've done it. Brilliant. Okay, so another 10 questions for you. Which sign means no stopping? Now, do you know what? You need to know, Claudia, awesome. You need to know these signs. It's no good having a guess because one day you'll be driving and you'll see all of those signs. You'll come across all of those signs. You need to know what they mean. And one of them means no stopping. You should not stop your car on this road. And you want to follow the rules, don't you? And you can come. I'm just watching my out, out my window, watching my son drive away. I've missed him. He's come to visit me and he's just driving. Well, come to visit us and he's just driving away. Never mind. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So sign B means no stopping. Now her double red shanty pants. Absolutely. Has anybody ever seen red lines? painted on a road, either in real life or in your theory test. Red lines painted on the road, a bit like double yellow lines, but they're red instead. Who's ever seen those? If you've been doing your theory, you should have come across them. If you've done a, yeah, okay, so red lines painted on the road. There's a lot of them in London, isn't there, TikTok? Yeah, um, red lines painted on the road mean no stopping okay that's what they mean these are red lines not painted on the road the red lines in a cross so red lines painted on the road means the same as red lines in a cross on a sign like that not the same as yellow lines what do yellow lines painted on the road mean you are allowed to stop when there are yellow lines not only London, but there's an awful lot in London. Yet yellow lines means no waiting. You can stop, let someone get out of your car and then drive away again, but you're not allowed to wait there. You're not allowed to park there, okay? Does that make sense? So no stopping. Should we go through these other signs? What does this one mean? What does the red, this one in a red circle mean? A lot in Glasgow, isn't it? It's the great. I didn't realise that. A lot of double yellow lines, double red lines in Glasgow. Yeah, right. It's no overtaking. Now, it's in a circle. Circle signs are orders. Make a circle with your hand and you'll see the shape of an O for order. Circle signs are orders and red circle signs tell you what you must not do or this road is not for you red o means no it's a way of remembering it okay so no what no overtaking this red car's doing the wrong thing there no overtaking brilliant what about sort of the red o means no sign 
What about this one? If it's red O means no, this road is not for you or you must not do this. What does this one mean? No, <laughs> all I, no, no cats. <laughs> I know you didn't mean that. Yeah, no cars. Yeah, absolutely. No cars. Fantastic. If that red O, that red circle had a person inside, what would it mean? If it wasn't a car, if it was a person, what would the sign mean? Red O means, no, they're doing brilliant, aren't they, Siobhan? They're doing brilliant. It would mean no, pedestrians, brilliant. So now you know that all red circle signs mean don't do it. This road is not for you. Red O means no. What does this one mean then? What is this sign? Does anybody know? Again, this is one you must know. You have to know this sign. You will see it all over the place. Yeah, it means brilliant. It means national speed limit. It means you can drive the fastest you're allowed to go for the type of road you're on for the type of vehicle you're driving. So there won't be any signs like this in a red circle. There won't be any of those. There'll just be this sign here telling you, well, you can drive the fastest you're allowed for the type of road you're on and for the type of vehicle you're driving. So it's going to be different if you're on a dual carriageway or a single carriageway. It's going to be different if you're driving a lorry or driving a car. OK, so you need to you'll know what vehicle you're driving. You'll know what road you're driving on. Make sense? Give me some yeses in the comments if I've helped anybody. And I've just pinned my course. To let you know, it will be 60 on a, on a, a rural road, on a single carriageway road. Yeah, it would. Brooke. Awesome. Congratulations. Now you get it. Awesome. OK, what messages are given by circular traffic signs that have a blue background. They give temporary directions during a diversion. They give directions to car parks. They give motorway information or they give mandatory instructions. So blue circle signs. Remember, I've told you what circle signs mean already. What do the blue ones mean? So I've got some D's. Any other thoughts? James, you know it. And I've got some C's. So I've got C's and D's. I'm going to give you a clue. What shape are motorway signs? What shape are motorway signs, guys? Put your answer in the comments. Does anybody know what shape? What shape and colour, but what shape are motorway signs. Rectangle, square, yeah, four-sided, okay? Re uh, motorway signs are rectangle. They are blue, but they're rectangle, they're not circular, okay? So we can get rid of C. They don't give motorway information. So what must the right answer be? What must the right answer be? If it's not C, pop your answer in again, it must be D, yet they give mandatory instructions. Let me explain that. Circle signs are orders. You know that, make a circle with your hand, look at, the sh look at your hand, you can see an O for order. Circle signs are orders. Blue circle signs tell you what you must do. Just say this out loud. Blue must do or this road is for you. And must do, another word for that is mandatory. M for must, M for mandatory. Just say that out loud. Help yourself to remember. Keep double tapping the guys. I've got 120,000 likes, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you. So blue circle signs give mandatory instructions. Does, has that helped anybody? Put some yeses in the comments. You've never really seen blue signs. I bet you have. You just haven't noticed them. 
there aren't loads of blue signs but you will have seen a blue sign i mean this is one you might not have seen blue must do you must do at least 30 miles per hour you probably never seen that one let's see if i can find another blue circle sign that i think you will have seen you've seen that one you must go around that way okay blue must do let's find another one let me find another one that i know you have seen blue circle signs i bet you've seen one like that okay da da denise loney awesome Blue circle sign, blue must do or this road is for you. I bet you've seen that one as well. You can go that way or that way to get to the same destination. Okay, let's find one more. Should I find one more? I think I've got one more in this pack. Blue must do or this road is for you. Have I got another one? Yeah, I've got another one. Here, what about this one? What, yeah, I know. People do forget about the blue circle signs. The course is $34.99. What does this one mean? You know this one and you will have seen it quite a lot. You just forget it exists, really. Keep left. Yeah, that, exactly. Uh, what about if blue must do or this road is for you? Who's this road for? Who is this road for? I know it's obvious. Put your answer in. Thank you, Kaz Rennie. It's always on islands, yeah, it is. It's for cyclists. So this is a route for cyclists, a cycle route. Yeah, blue must do, or this road is for you. Must do, must turn left. This road is for you, this road is for cyclists. Cool. Okay, so where's my course? It's pinned, you'll always see a gold link at the bottom left of your screen while I'm live. So that's where it is. But I've just pinned it for you. Next question, what does this sign mean? R bus station on the right, contraflow bus lane, with flow bus lane, or give way to buses? It's pinned bows. Yeah, okay, so pinned bows is that, that's my course there, okay? That link, can you see that link in the bottom right of your screen? Have a look at the bottom right of your screen, and I bet you can see it. I'll pin it for you there though. Okay, so what does this sign mean? Pop your answers in so I know what you know and I know if people need help or if everybody knows this one. So I've got some B's and some C's. So people are thinking it means either contraflow bus lane or with flow bus lane. And some people are saying, I don't know. Shall I help you? Shall I help you? Okay, so this sign means contraflow bus lane. Contra means against. The buses are going against the flow. This sign is showing you a one-way street with three lanes. It's showing you that the other vehicles are going to go up the road, but the buses are going down the road. The buses will be going against the flow. And that's why it's got arrows on it. It's got arrows to show you the buses won't be going up the road the same as you will be. The buses will be going against the flow as a contraflow bus lane. Give a yes or a thumbs up if that makes sense. Give a yes or a thumbs up if that makes sense to you. And I'll tell you what a with flow bus lane would look like. It makes sense to you. Awesome. That's all I want to make theory easy. If it was with flow bus lane, that would mean you are driving up the road and the buses will be driving up the road. The buses will be going with the flow of normal traffic. So what do you think would be missing off a with flow bus lane? It'd be similar to this, very similar, but what wouldn't it have if the buses would be going in the same direction? You know it, Catherine. You know it, Devil Child Bay. Ola, Ola, you know it. Shantipan, you know it. Anika Khan, yeah. Lavinia, it would have no arrows on it. 
It wouldn't have arrows if it, the buses were traveling with the flow. Why wouldn't it have arrows if buses were going in the same direction as the other traffic? Anna, awesome. Why wouldn't it have arrows? You're absolutely right. There'll be no arrows. It'll be a rectangle sign with nothing in this space here, no arrows, and a bus in this space, but no arrows on the sign. Devil Child Bay, it doesn't need arrows. Why would there be arrows to say everyone's going in the same direction, okay? So it'd be look exactly like that, but with no arrows on it. Lyra, oh, thank you for the donut. I'll eat that in a bit. Brilliant, yeah, Damon, Catherine, you all know it, that's brilliant. If you don't know it, now you do. Has that helped you in any way? Devil Child Bay, yeah, someone just asked me that. Should I put it onto YouTube? Yeah, okay, I will do. I'll put this one onto YouTube. I'll download it as soon as I've finished while I'm having my tea. Okay, it makes sense, brilliant. Okay, that's all I want. Cool, what does this sign mean? A, cyclists will must dismount. B, cycles aren't allowed. C, cycle route ahead. D, cycle in single file. Why are you answering that? People are asking me about YouTube. I haven't put much on there recently. I have got another brand new TV. It needs to be on the wall there. It's not there yet. I've just moved house because um, while TikTok is recorded that way, YouTube needs to be that way to, to get the best out of it. So I need to have a TV next to me. So it's just taking time for me to set up. I'm in a new house, no kitchen, no, well, I've got a kitchen, no worktops and no cooker, no bathroom. Yeah, so I have to get showered at the gym. Okay, so I'm, I'm in a bit of a kerfuffle at the moment, but it will be there soon. Okay, so what does this sign mean? Yeah, okay, so let me give you a clue and then you can put the answer in again. You are smashing it, guys. Okay, triangle signs are all warning signs, okay? Make a triangle with your hand, open your hands out, you've got a W for warning. Triangle signs are warning signs. If all triangle signs are warning signs, what does this mean? Does it mean cyclists must dismount, must get off the bikes? Does it mean cyclists aren't allowed? Does it mean cycle routes ahead? Or does it mean cycle in single file? You know it now. All triangle signs are warning signs. So what does it mean? Yeah, oh, thank you, Nane, first. Yeah, it does. It means cycle route ahead. It's warning you. You're driving along and it's warning you there's a cycle route. What should you do? You're driving along. You see a warning sign for a cycle route. What would you do as a driver? What would you check? What would you physically do? Heather Holland, yay! Awesome, congratulations. You'd be prepared to give plenty of room. Fantastic answer. What else would you do? You'd check your mirrors. Fantastic answer. You'd be aware. Fantastic answer. Yeah, just bought your course. I'm try, trying to get into my account. There's a password and it keeps saying error. Okay, go on to... There's a password already been set for you. That's why, that's why. You're trying to make up an extra account. But go there, they will help you, okay? C, why is it C? Because triangle signs are warning signs. Cyclists must dismount. I don't know if that sign exists, does it? Cycles aren't allowed. No cyclists. Would it, what shape would it be if it was no cyclists, guys? If the answer was, if that was a no cyclists, what shape? It would be round, all oh, like, yeah. What colour? Red O, because red O means no. It would be in a circle. Cycle in single file. I haven't seen that sign either, okay? So cycle route ahead is the right answer there. That makes sense? Does that make sense? Red O means no. Cool. Which sign means end of dual carriageway, A, B, C or D? Amzi Raz, absolutely. 
Don't worry. Do you know what? This is, this is a safe place to get things wrong. This is a safe place to answer questions incorrectly and then learn what the right answer is forever. And some people that get answers correct, they don't understand it. They've just memorised it. They will admit that to you. I've just memorised it. I don't actually properly understand. So don't worry about getting stuff wrong. Uh, Evelina, congratulations. So which sign means end of dual carriageway? Pop your answer in the comments. You learn from mistakes, you do, you do. It's not your test, this is revision. Cool, so you, yeah, a lot of you got that one right there. It is D, that's end of dual carriageway. So what does sign A mean? What does sign A mean? Anybody know? Yeah, it means the road narrows. Fantastic answers. Look, you've got two lines, which means two lanes. And the lines go in, which means the lanes go in, and you end up with two lines that are closer to each other. It's warning you, triangle signs are warning signs. Sign A is warning you the road is going to get narrow. So what are you going to do? The road's going to get narrow on both sides. You're going to have to be careful, aren't you? The road's going to get narrow on both sides. What does sign bit slow down you are? You're going to need to slow down, look well ahead, plan your approach. What's sign B warning you? Triangle signs are warning signs. Hazard, you've passed your theory, yay! Pat on the back, that's awesome. What is sign B warning you about? The road is going to get narrow on one side, on the right-hand side. Fantastic. Okay, again, look well ahead. Check your mirrors. Plan your approach because the road's suddenly going to get narrower and there might not be space for you both to fit. Awesome. What is sign C warning you about? Triangle signs are warning signs. I am keep repeating myself as more people joining. Okay, thank you, the two fluff something okay so the sign c is warning you about two-way traffic awesome awesome two-way traffic you're on a one-way road and it's warning you that straight in front of you is going to be a two-way road so be careful oh awesome okay next question i've got a cap that's awesome thank you jimmy jimmy uh what does this sign mean a, change to the left-hand lane. B, leave at the next exit. C, contraflow system. Or D, one-way street. What is this sign telling you? Nadine, congratulations. Yeah, this sign is telling you that there is a contraflow flow system. Where would you find this sign? Contraflows are fun to drive on, are they? I don't like driving on them that much. Okay, what? Well, where would you see this sign? James Woodley, fantastic. Where would you see this sign, guys? Motorways, you're going to see this sign on the motorway. See the line that goes up a bit and then breaks and then you can see the top of the line there. The line that's coming down, but it's got a gap in it. Well, that's the central reservation. That line is the central reservation. And this sign is saying that the traffic in lane two needs to go over across the gap in the central reservation to drive on the wrong side of the motorway. There's roadworks, isn't there? Okay, so you're going to be traveling against the flow. Remember, contra flow means against the flow. Anais Marie, awesome, congratulations. Does that make a bit of sense to you? You're going to be driving on the wrong side of the motorway because there are um, roadworks. Does that make some sense to you? Yes, 100% since you born. awesome. Next question, what should you do when you see this sign 
as you travel along the motorway. You understand that contraflow sign now, which is amazing because a lot of people will answer it correctly, but not understand it. And I want you to understand it. What does this sign mean? Leave the motorway at the next exit, turn left immediately, change lane or move onto the hard shoulder. got A's and B's. That's what I normally get here, A's and B's. The answer is leave the motorway at the next exit. Look at it. It looks like an upside down on its sideways L. It looks like an L that's sort of tipped upside down. So leave the motorway at the next exit. The sign is showing you go up and then across. So keep on driving and then across to the left to leave the motorway. There wouldn't be a sign on a motorway saying turn left immediately because you can't do that on a motorway, okay? Why the sun? Those are four flashing lights, okay, to make it stand out to you. You see this amber traffic light ahead. Which light or lights will come on next? Hip, hip, array, hip, hip, array, murder, a case. Awesome. What lights will come on next? Red alone, red and amber together, green and an amber together, or green alone? A, B, C, or D? What is the right answer? I've got A's, B's, and D's. Yeah, okay, the right answer is red alone. Say this with me. Where's the traffic lights? Say this with me. The traffic light sequence is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it'll say in your head. So join in with me or whisper it. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud, it stays in your head. Once more, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. So what comes after Amber, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you can learn that sequence and it's as easy as A, B, C. It is. You know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, don't you? Now you know red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud, it'll stay in your head. And then you'll always get that question or questions like it right every single time. Say it again, say it with me then. Say it with me, then put D in the comments. I'm making a fool of myself. I've got no blinds here at the moment, so people outside can even see me making a fool of myself for you. So I'll say it one more time, or a couple more times. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud, it'll say in your head. It's red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it, say it to yourself. Now, keep saying it. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Keep saying it. Go and tell somebody. Go and teach it to somebody. Teach it to your mum, your boyfriend, your child. Go and some, looking at some dogs going past. Why red, red? It's, it's not red, red. Okay, so let me explain it. Red, then red and amber, then green, then amber, then back to red, then back to red and amber, back to green. So it's going to keep on going up and down like that. Okay, so it just keeps on going. You need to know what comes after red and what comes after amber. That's why we do the whole song. Okay, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say this with husband at the dinner table. Can your husband say it? Ask him. Ask him what comes after amber, or is he watching already? Why is it not green alone? Because it's not. It's red, then red and amber, then green, then amber, and then red. Cool. Okay, which arm signal tells you that the car you're following is going to pull up? A, B, C, or D? Which arm signal tells you, you really need to know this, Neve, yay, that's awesome, that's awesome. Which sign, put your answer in, and I know if everyone gets it right, you don't need an explanation. If a few people get it wrong, you do need an explanation, okay? So show me what you think. 
it's like singing to a rainbow song, is it? It is, it is, yeah. Red, 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 and amber, green, amber, red. Cool. Lots of, so some not sure's, don't worry about that. Okay, so which car means the car's gonna, which arm signal means the car's gonna pull off? Okay, that number D is not an arm signal. You wouldn't be putting your arm in and out of a window like that. That's not an arm signal, is it? So get rid of that, a complete and utter rubbish answer. So this one is showing you an arm going up and down, that means up and down means slowing down. Up and down means slowing down. Do that, and then put D in the comments. Do that for slowing down. So if an arm, if someone in front of you is putting their arm up and down, that means they are slowing down. Okay, but do it, and then put D in the comments. So I know you've done it, and I know you've learned every single time you'll know what this one means. And you will also know that this one is showing you an arrow going out of the car and an arrow going back in the car is rubbish. It's like, it's like that. Who would do that, put an arm in and out of the car? That one's rubbish. Does that make sense? Explain another. Okay, um, this one, B, is showing you an arm just going out like this. That means right, do it right turn, I'm turning right, my right arm is just going to go out of the window. Do that and put an R for right. That's, it's as simple as that. Right is just right, slowing down is up and down. Do it. And I'll show you the last one. There's only three to learn, guys. Brilliant, so A must be turning left. Look, you can see a circle of arrows. Look there, a circle of arrows. So if you want to turn left, as if you're steering left, you're going to move your car, you're, you're going to move your hand, your arm, in a forward circle. So forward circles is left. Do it and put L for left. Join in with me. Don't let me make a fool of myself on my own at 10 past eight on a Tuesday night. So left is forward. As if you're turning your steering wheel to the left, keep on turning that, that right arm in circles forward. So a forward circle. So get your arm here and move it forwards, okay? Use your indicator. Of course, use your indicator if it's working. You need to know these in case it's not working. Obviously, every single time without fail, I show arm signals. Lots of people say, use your indicators. We know, use your indicators, don't we? We all know that. Let's all do it. Who's joined in with all of those and has learned? Put a me in the comments if you now know all three arm signals. Just put me in the comments if you, if you know them all now. They're dead easy, aren't they? They're dead easy. You fail seven times. I'm here every weekday morning for you um, on this channel um, and this course that pinned below, only 34.99 and you will pass when I've gone through it. I'm going to the next question when I'm ready. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I won't be hurried by other people. Um, so I'm sorry it's not at your pace though. You had this question today, you had to guess. Don't guess it. Listen guys, if you don't know what these signs mean, how are you going to react if somebody in front of you is doing one of these signs? You wouldn't know what they were meaning, uh, okay? Can you explain the last question? This one, I think I've just done that, haven't I? Is that what you mean? Is that what you mean? So let me know. Okay, next question. You're waiting at a T-junction. What should you do if a vehicle is coming from the right with its left indicator flashing? Move out and accelerate hard, love an arm signal. Wait until the vehicle starts to turn. Pull out before the vehicle reaches the junction. Move out slowly. Yet yeah, um, for driving, if you go onto this www.testbuddy.app and have a look for my driving test course. If you're an ADI, please DM me if you got if you um if you need to take your part one. DM me, I can help you. Okay, so what should you do? So you're, you are in this purple car. This, this green car is driving towards you with a left indicator flashing, meaning he should be going down the road here. 
Yeah, it's me, Joshie D, absolutely. Should you move out and accelerate hard? Should you wait until the vehicle starts to turn in? Should you pull out before the vehicle reaches the junction or should you move out slowly? You're absolutely right. It's going to be B, wait until the vehicle starts to turn in. As Josh said, never trust an indicator. What if, well, okay, what you tell me, what, why might the indicator be on? Why might, it might be turning left, but what else might have happened? So that green car, the driver may be turning left. It might be on accidentally. Awesome. Might have forgotten to turn it off. Awesome. Left it on by accident. A mistake. He could be pulling over just after the junction. Now, that means they've signalled too early. That's a mistake. That's wrong. But that might happen. I have seen that happen. The car pulled out, they crashed into each other, and I saw a lot of shouting and arguing going on. Does that now make sense, guys? Does that make sense? Cool. So that's another 10 questions done. What have you learned? How did you get on? Have you learned anything? at all in the last 10 questions. Just put a yes or tell me what you've learned. Were they using choice words? They were using choice words, yes. Yeah, a bit, a bit uh, quite entertaining, isn't it, when people are doing that. Full marks, yeah. You've got nine, so you've learned something God hates. The one you got wrong, you've learned from it. Yes, you're amazing. Oh, thank you. You've learned something, uh, London. Oh, awesome, awesome. Right, Contraflow bus lane, you've learned, you've learned lots, fantastic. Has anybody learned about Contraflows on motorways? You've learned the traffic light sequence, that's amazing. Arm signals, some of you learned that, haven't you? Brilliant, brilliant. You, you are, all of you are absolutely amazing for investing your time and your effort into learning something. Um, yeah, you can just, subscribe to my YouTube account by clicking on the link below. Uh, I have a course as well, so you can use the same link to sign up for my course if you want step-by-step -step help to know that you'll pass your theory test. Stephen, red, red, amber, green, amber, red. Stephen, that's awesome. You know it now. You'll know it every single time. When you go out and see traffic lights, look at them and think, I know what's coming next and have a go at it not very clear on arm signal. Which one? Because I bet you know that that one's right. Which arm signal don't you know? Let me know. Hi Yash, do you have a driving course? I do Yash. If you go to testbuddy.app forward slash contact and look for driving test course, you'll see it there. I will eventually do some driving stuff on here, but driving test course is on there. Cool. I'm, I'm going to have to go. I've, I've, it's quarter past eight. I've been working since nine o'clock. I'm going to have to go. But have a look at my course. Diane, Diane will be here tomorrow uh, on this account at 9am for three hours. She will also be here on this account at 2pm for three hours. And I'll be back here tomorrow night at half past six. Um, listen, my course has got absolutely everything you need. Arm signal pulling up. Pulling up means you're slowing down, doesn't it? If you're pulling up, that means you're slowing down. Yeah? If you're slowing down, your arm goes up and down. Up and down means slowing down. Do it. Up and down means slowing down. And left is just, if you turn your steering wheel to the left, turn your arm forward. Forward circle is left. Right, left, and up and down is slowing down. Write that down right now. Keep on following my lives. Keep on asking me if you're, if you're struggling. I'll keep on helping you. Were you crossing today, Alexandra? I'm really, oh no, Diane's doing crossings tomorrow morning. Go on to Diane, this account, Diane Hall will be doing crossings tomorrow morning. This course has got worksheets, video tutorials, Factless, look at what Angela, Angela, what again, what? Tell me what you want me to do again. This course has got topic mock tests, full mock tests. The course has got case studies and so much more. Reese, yay, that's awesome. 
You're cancelling your theory tomorrow. Well, it's a good idea if you don't feel ready, okay? I don't know why you're cancelling, but if you don't feel ready, then don't, don't do it. You don't need to. You want to have a good theory knowledge. You're trusting Diane. I've, I've known Diane for many, many, many years, okay? I've known Diane for a long time. We are both um, um, uh, nerves specialists. We're both theory experts. We're both uh, grade A driving instructors. So yeah, I trust Diane. Um, my course has got all the most updated Nissin. Awesome. Most updated questions. It's only 34.99. Let me show you what's in it. You've got about one, one and a half more minutes before I'm off to tonight so you can sign up for this course. Cool. In the introduction, you'll see how to go through the course. For all 14 theory topics, there's a worksheet that you can fill in if you want to. Watch all the video tutorials, then listen to the list of facts. Listening to the fact list while you're doing other stuff, like going to the gym or cooking, means that you can use different times to learn and that you can learn without even trying to learn. Just like when you listen to the words of a song and you learned the words without even trying. Then it goes through all the practice questions. When you get all the questions correct, have a go at the topic mock test. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the topic mock test, move on to the next topic going through all theory topics in the same way will make case studies questions simple to answer. <laughs> the 16 mock tests in the course are designed to cover every single practice question. And the course has got techniques for answering questions, techniques for doing hazard perception, and techniques for getting rid of test anxiety. That was your fault. That was your fault, Josh and, and, and Craig, John Clark. You made me do a bit of a boogie there with my music. Okay, if you sign up now, you get Hazard Perception course for free. You get Hypnosis course for free. If you sign up now, you get two free eBooks as well. Listen, don't forget to follow me on TikTok right now. I'll be putting stuff on every single day. I'm gonna put some stuff on tonight to help you. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube account and you can follow me on Instagram as well at Theory Test Practice. Next live lessons, tomorrow 9am here, tomorrow 2pm here, tomorrow half past six here. I love doing these lives. I've got 309 people left here, 311 left here. It is always your fault. You put me off. Um, so you see, put me off again. Yeah, so um, I'm here. I love doing these lives. I love helping you. Annie Winterburn here, making theory easy for you. So... Uh, who was lazy earlier? That's Diane Hall, um, a good friend and colleague of mine. We are both driving instructors. We are both test nerves specialists. Well, she specialises more in test nerves. We are both theory test experts. I do a bit. I do more on the theory than she does. Okay, so so yeah, she's now working with me on on this account sometimes, and also new driver program. So follow new driver program. Right, let's double tap the screen, guys. Let me see loads of likes before I go. That would be amazing. Tomorrow, yeah, I'm here at half past six. Diane's here on this account at nine and two. Does test buddy set up a password for you? When you yeah, they do. I'm sure they do. I don't use my course. You use it. Um, um, does test buddy... Right, who can answer that? Does test buddy... Set up, a, set up a password for you when you first create the account. Uh, they've created an account for you, Denise. You don't have to go and create an account. What people sometimes do is they go and create another account. Then they can't log in. Um, they're not using the account that Test Buddy set up already for you. So go back to your email or, or, yeah, I've got a username, but not a password. Okay, yeah, they do. Username and password. Oh my God. If you're not sure, please go to these people here. Screenshot right now so you've got it. Press the link in your email. It will take you to your account. Don't go and create another account. Okay, smile. <laughs> you got it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, guys, I am off now. So I hope that's helped. Go and, go and, um, 
Amzi Baz, you're asking me questions I don't know the answers to. I can't, I don't use my course, I've just created it. Um, you have to go to the tech, the tech experts to help. Okay, so go to these people and they will help you. Thank you everybody for signing in tonight and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Siobhan, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, well, let me know if you get called John again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll have to tell her. I'll have to tell her. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it on YouTube. I'll do it on YouTube now. It might take a, a while to download. Cool. There's my course pinned there for you. I'm off. Bye, guys.